Hi, I'm Catalina. Thank you all for joining us today and welcome to the ICT Innovation for Inclusion. For those who have not met me before, I'm Catalina Sayé, Chair of Fundación Descubreme and Vice Chair of Fundación Corpartes. I am wearing a blue, a navy blue uh, sweater. I have curly hair and I'm wearing glasses. I am delighted today to be here sharing with you the work we have done almost four, for almost four years alongside our partners with the Innovation Laboratory in, with the IDB uh, Bank and Fundación Corona from Colombia with the practice, successful practice called Pacto de Productividad Chile. Before I mention the program itself, let me tell you about our work together. At Fundación Descubreme, we've been working for more than 11 years to promote the inclusion of people with cognitive disabilities. We have focused on all areas of human development, but particularly we have done a lot of work in employment. Since 2019, we have focused also in inclusive education. When we started more than 11 years ago, people in Chile hardly talked about inclusion. We realized that in order to make our work successful, we needed to include all the stakeholders around, around the people with disabilities in order to make this work. Companies, foundations, the people with disabilities with us. We need to make big alliances and we, and we needed everyone to work with us. So and we also needed to bring them all to a level of no knowledge to make this work. Everyone had different expectations and different knowledge about how employment and how people and how work could actually uh, function. In 2017, we actually came across with a really good practice that had been implemented for a, successfully for eight years. This is Pacto de Productividad. This had happened in Colombia, led by Confundación Corona. They had developed a joint model of inclusive employment based on the Convention of Rights of Persons with Disabilities. This program brought Colombian stakeholders together and invited them to take an active role to increase the employment of people with disabilities in the open labor market. After seeing the results, we started conversations with both Pacto de Productividad and the IBD Lab about the possibility of replicating this program in Chile. Four years later, we are on our second year of implementation. It's been actually quite reassuring to see how every stakeholder back in Chile has uh, replied to our invitation. How does it work? In Chile, Pacto de Productividad is led by Fundación Descubreme and the IBD Lab with the technical support of Fundación Corona. To make strategic decisions, the program created a cross-sectoral governance system consisting of the public, private, and civil sectors. The goal is to agree on a quality standard for the inclusive employment of people with disabilities, and therefore ensure equal opportunities for everyone. In recent years, we have observed important technical innovations that have made easier for people with disabilities to find employment in the, in the labor market. Some examples are, for example, online matchmaking platforms or devices such as screen readers and online sign, sign language interpretation. Also, we have seen a close relationship between technology and productivity in the work, workplace. Using technology allows us to increase productivity levels and simplify some tasks for employees. We have also seen that this situation has not been addressed at addressed carefully for, pe for people with disabilities. Today, little is known about the real impact of technology on the performance and productivity of employees with disabilities. There is little evidence of technological solutions that have involved the perspective of people with disabilities in, the, in their development. Also, the high cost of some of these technologies and the general unawareness among people with disabilities leaves an evident gap between technological development and the effective inclusions of people with disabilities in the labor market. 
but you can also see this as an opportunity to remove many of the barriers that limit inclusion with, within employment. So this is what brings us here today. Technological innovation is a main line of, of work at Pacto de Proptida. We expect to identify and test technological solutions that enhance the, enhance the performance of people with disabilities in the labor market. For this purpose, in 2020, Pacto de Proptida and the IBD Lab allied with, allied with CIRA project to develop the first version of the ICT Innovation for Inclusion program. This program aims at implementing technological and innovative solutions that facilitate employment for people with disabilities. During the CIRA project calls for nominations, the team identified a series of proven technological solutions that could be replicated in Chilean companies. These solutions went through a rigorous selection process, and after a few months, we chose three projects that will begin their implementation later this year. Before I present these solutions, let me introduce you to the panel that is joining us today. First, we have Francisco Subercaso. Francisco is the National Director at the Chilean National Disability Service, one of our partners at Pacto de Brutia. Before being National Director, Francisco led two regional offices at the National Disability Service. He also worked at the private sector. Thank you for joining us, Francisco. Uh, hi, hello. Thanks you for the invitation. I'm nice to be here with you. Thanks. Second, we have Jürgen Meze, a disability inclusion officer in the Gender Equality and Diversity Branch of the International Labour Organization. Jürgen is responsible for mainstreaming disability issues into ILO programming and developing and disseminating disability specific, specific knowledge products. He's also part of the Secretariat of the ILO Global Business and Disability Network. Thank you very much, Jürgen, for being with us today. Thank you, Catalina. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to the discussion. And finally, we have Gabriela Martinez with us. Gabriela has over 25 years of experience working on disability inclusion on topics such as inclusive employment, inclusive education, promotion of rights, and empowerment of people with disabilities. She's also a representative for the Americas of Inclusion International, the international work network of people with intellectual disabilities and their families. Thank you so much, Gabriela, for being with us today. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. To start, I would like, like to ask Francisco two questions. First, how do you think this public and private articulation contrib contributes to creating synergies to develop social innovation? And second, what do you think is the role of the National Disability Service to foster social innovation aimed at the inclusion of people with disabilities? Okay, uh, first of all, I believe that public-private articulation is key to generate healthy growth in any economy. And in particular, it contributes to promoting all kinds of social innovation initiatives. Let me explain. If we leave all the proposal to the initiative of the state, the economy becomes welfare, everything becomes lower, the more bureaucratic and creativity and, and, and the creativity and private push drop considerably, since it will be easy, easier to wait for a solution to the problem from part of another than to risk own capital for it. If we go to the other extreme, where it relies solely on private efforts, there will not be a correct incentive to generate public goods since there will be no one who values the positive ex externalities of projects that have a positive social benefit, but, host, but whose cost deprived of being produced may be greater than the private benefit they generate, and therefore, ultimately, nobody produced them. Therefore, the healthy thing for a society and for an economy is that there is a correct balance between the provision of public goods and the provision of private goods in a dynamic of mutual support and benefit. 
uh, finally, by managing this articulation in a process of permanent dialogue, what is obtained is a public good that is based on the very essence of democracy. And thus, all those innovation initiatives or strategies that are encouraged and promoted through public policies agreed between the public sector and the private sector are socially validated. Uh, in the other hand, uh, regarding the second question, I consider that the National Disability Service, CENADIS, is a key actor articulating the effort of the public and private sector aimed at the inclusion of people with disabilities. On one hand, it collects the concerns and needs of civil society. And in the, in the other hand, it technically assists the public offer on disability matters, ensuring that it responds as best as possible to the needs it has gathered from the groups of people with disabilities. In addition, it must be able to communicate and promote the progress that is being made in matter of inclusion, accessibility, participation, and equal opportunities. For this reason, I believe that Senadi's roles in matter of social innovation is ultimately threefold and involves articulating, promoting, and communicating, com communicating public and private work that seeks the full inclusion of people with disabilities. And that triple role must be assumed from a rights per perspective, with, with is that our law 2422 and the International Convention of the Rights of Persons with Disabilities give us. Thank you very much. As you mentioned, the collaboration between the public, private, and civil sector is essential for shared goals. I have another question. What do you believe is the value of government participation in initiatives such as Pacto Productividad and the ICT program? Oh, ICT is a clear example of, of how to take advantage of synergies between public and private work. Due to the Pacto de Productividad initiative and its alliance with different organizations, the basis for ICT were generated. To generate this type of initiative, you need to be able to take risk, have a broad vision on the ability to coordinate and articulate efforts, three things that are very difficult to do for a private initiative without public support. In this sense, we believe that Senadis has favorably contributed to open our eyes show and prioritize the most relevant needs in the world of disability and contribute with the current normative perspective. Pacto de Productividad, on his side, has put his time, leadership, and focus. Actually, the best initiatives, in order to them to finally become public policies, necessarily require a correct harmony between the public and private work. Otherwise, no matter how good the initiative is, we do not see how it can remain in time. Thank you so much. We believe it's in everyone's responsibility that we take an active role to break down barriers for inclusion. And you have shown your commitment as well. We really appreciate it. Now, Moving on to our friends at the ILO, I would like to ask Jurgen a question to start. From the, role and uh, from the role and experience from ILO, what have been the results from your work to promote inclusive employment of people with disabilities in the open labor market? Yeah, thank you very much, Catalina. This is a, <laughs> this is a big question to ask, and I hope I, I can give a, a answer in, 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 a, in a few minutes. I mean, just to structure my answer a little bit, what we are trying to do here in the International Labour Organization is to work on the enabling environment for the employment of people with disabilities. I'll talk about a little bit about that. 
At the same time, looking at the supply side, will people with disabilities get the right skills uh, that are needed in the modern labor and the open labor market, obviously? And then the demand side, um, who are the ones employing people with disabilities, right? So coming to the en enabling environment there, for example, we need to look at is the labor market um, data actually disaggregated by disability? Do we know how many people with disabilities and what type of disabilities these people have, how many of them are employed, and the quality of employment? For example, we know that um, in 2020 alone, an equivalent to 255 million full-time jobs were lost due to the COVID crisis, but we don't necessarily know how many people with disabilities were affected by this huge unemployment and, and um, yeah, unemployment crisis. So data is key. We are working, for example, in, in Kenya also on, on giving advice on how these uh, data in the labor market can be collected, analyzed and used. Uh, for effective policy um, design. At the same time, we look at social protection. Are the social protection systems we have around the world, are they inclusive of people with disabilities? Do they not create barriers for employment? Sometimes we talk about the benefit trap. You either get uh, benefits due to your disability and then you're not eligible for employment anymore. That obviously, this uh, lack of flexibility needs to be addressed. Then we look at job placement services. Do we actually bring the supply and the demand side of the labor market together? Do we get the job seekers with disabilities speaking to the employers and vice versa? So this is some of the areas we work on in, in terms of enabling the environment to, to promote the employment of people with disabilities. On the supply side, obviously, we need to make sure that vocational training or any type of training that is needed in, in, in the labor market of today is inclusive of people with disabilities. And we need to move away, and the CRPD is also clear on that, we need to move away from a segregated approach in which we have workshops that only cater to people with disabilities. No, we need to make sure that um, in the end, people with disabilities are included in mainstream skills development with the, of, obviously accessibility, reasonable accommodation, all of that is, is key in, in making sure people with disabilities acquire the needs that, um, that they need to compete in the open labor market. And we have a good, good example there in Bangladesh where, where the uh, reform of the vocational training system has been going on for years and the people with disabilities are included. Then moving to the last, last point, demand side. So sensitizing employers about the benefits of, of um, employing people with disabilities. Obviously, as a UN entity, the ILO is, is committed to human rights and the CRPD is our guiding frameworks. At the same time, we also need to spell out the economic benefits to employers, the benefits in the wider diversity inclusion discussion of including people with disabilities as asset in the workforce. We work with, uh, with the private sector a lot under the ILO Global Business and Disability Network. It has national networks also, as, as you know, in Chile. Um, we also work with the public sector as an employer, for example, with Canada, New York City, Ireland, and trade unions, especially in Latin America, have played a key role in also making sure that the benefits of, of uh, employing people with disabilities are, are well understood. And as I said, we work with governments, employers, workers. These are the official constituents of the International Labour Organization. And obviously, we always try to make sure that organizations of people with disabilities are consulted, are involved whenever we design something that is relevant for the labour market. Thanks so much, Catalina. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have seen many times how change can be brought through innovation and collaboration. I would like to ask you a question, uh, question on this matter. How do you believe that we can promote development, social innovation initiatives targeted to in, towards inclusive employment through public and private collaboration? Yeah, thank you, Catalina. I, I mentioned in, in, the, in the answer to your first question that we uh, in the ILO are facilitating the Global Business and Disability mm -hmm. Network. It's one of the most successful public-private partnerships of the ILO, the ILO being the, the public facilitator of this employers-led uh, network. It has more than 30 or almost 30 global companies on board, more than 30 national um, networks of inclusive companies. 
eight not-for-profit organizations, including the Disability, International Disability Alliance. You see, it's an employers-driven, multi-stakeholder platform. And, and I think that is key, bringing all the relevant stakeholders together. And sometimes it's a topical discussion where you see, look, this, this, this could be an ally for the work on X, and this could be an ally for the work on Y. And um, what we try to do, we, we try to develop global solutions that can apply, can be applied, obviously not applied directly, but can be adjusted at country level um, or sub-national sub, uh, sub level. And one of the things we have been working on recently, one of the, let's say, emerging topics is uh, the future of work in general. So what are the trends, the mega trends in the future of work that we need to be aware of and that we need to be um, influencing so these trends take issues of disability, the needs of people with disabilities into account. Um, climate change, obviously, the digital push, the whole technical revo technological revolution, the demographic change. These are the mega trends we need to be aware of and, and um, 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 work constructively with. And just yesterday, here also during the Zero Project conference, we um, we published uh, um, a report on the digital, digital economy, uh, which is obviously even more important during this this um, this um, this pandemic. And we have yesterday we also had a webinar on AI recruitment and how it can have a disability bias. One of the things we're working on is also neuro neurodiversity and how neurodivergent. Uh, people can be included in, in workforces and companies around the world. And all of this we can only do with, with uh, tapping into the expertise of other allies. For example, we are a partner. I mean, we, <laughs> the, the ILO Global Business and Disability Network, we are partner of the Valuable 500 that you all well know of Purple Space, so the big platform of employee resource groups on disability worldwide. We also work with the Disability Hub Europe, uh, led by Fundacion Onze in Spain, funded by the European Social Fund, with whom we actually launched uh, the publication on digital economy yesterday. So just to summarize, I think it's always uh, uh, valuable to have a diverse uh, approach and looking into who are the allies on specific topics like the ones I mentioned just now. Thanks so much. Thank you, Jürgen, for providing us with your expertise. Undoubtedly, the role of organizations such as the ILO is fundamental for social development, and we're delighted to have you today here with us. Now, I would like to ask Gabriela, as a member of one of the biggest networks of the Organization for People with disab Intellectual Disabilities and their families, what role should organizations of people with disabilities have in this kind of initiatives on innovation? And what are the challenges involved in this sort of processes? What lessons have you learned? What can you share with us? Okay, bien, pues. Me parece que para re responder esta pregunta en este panel que estamos hablando entre el sector público y el sector privado, es necesario reconocer cómo el sector público se encarga de satisfacer las necesidades sociales, vigilar que las acciones propuestas para resolver las problemáticas sean ejercidas al marco de la ley y en favor de los ciudadanos, mientras que el sector privado puede tener orientaciones con o sin fines de lucro en el desempeño de sus actividades. Esto quiere decir que puede comercializar bienes o servicios con el objetivo de generar ganancias o bien dedicarse a la resolución de problemas sociales con el objetivo de mejorar las condiciones de vida de las personas o cuidar el medio ambiente, como podría ser el caso de las organizaciones civiles eh, de personas con discapacidad. Para obtener una articulación virtuosa entre ambos sectores se debe tomar en cuenta las situaciones sociales que convergen a todos y que establecer objetivos principales para la articulación en el servicio de la sociedad, no solamente como una obligación, sino un compromiso moral. Thank you for the question. So in order to answer and respond this question in this panel, we must first understand the difference between the public sector and the private sector. The public sector is responsible for meeting our social needs and ensuring the actions proposed to solve these problems 
are executed within the framework of the law and in benefit for its citizens. Meanwhile, the private sector can be guided towards profit or non-profit in the performance of such activities. This means that it can commercialize goods or services with the objective of generating profits, or also it can be dedicated to contributing to the resolution of social issues and problems with the objective of improving people's lives, living conditions, and caring for the environment, such as would be the case for civil organizations in benefit of people with disabilities. In order to obtain the virtual articulation between both sectors, it must take into account the social situations and converge with all of them. It must be established that the main objective of this articulation is the improvement and betterment of society as an obligation and commitment beyond seeking profits for both sectors. También es necesario hacer énfasis en el apoyo que se pueden brindar a ambos sectores, es decir, cuáles son sus fortalezas de forma individual para aportarlas al trabajo en equipo. Por ejemplo, el sector público tiene a favor las leyes, las reformas, como un apoyo para sustentar un nuevas iniciativas o para hacer políticas públicas que garanticen derechos, en este caso los derechos de las personas con discapacidad, que brinden servicios, que promuevan la participación ciudadana, entre otros, mientras que el sector privado pues, tiene el prestigio de una marca y el poder de llegar de manera mucho muy eficiente mediante la publicidad. Eh, ante esta posibilidad, pues hay la la, la manera de movilizar información a través de medios y en ese sentido se debe aprovechar para trabajar en temas transversales como la educación, los derechos, la desigualdad, el apoyo a grupos vulnerables, ya que esto podría ser de alguna forma una plataforma para proponer una vinculación entre ambos sectores. Si bien al participar en estos proyectos se busca el bien común, no se descarta por completo el beneficio para los sectores. Es decir, para el sector privado se le está proporcionando la oportunidad de entrar en el mundo de la responsabilidad social empresarial, lo cual puede posicionarlos ante el público como empresas que no solamente se preocupan por generar ganancias económicas, sino también por contribuir en el mejoramiento de la calidad de vida de las personas que enfrentan la discriminación, la dis desigualdad, como es el caso de las personas con discapacidad. Mm -hmm. And to continue with that, in order to be able to emphasize the amount of focus that should be placed in support of both sectors, it must be said that we have to identify their strengths individually, contribute to them in a team. For example, the public sector has a certain favorance of laws and reforms that support and sustain new, new initiatives and make public policies guarantee the rights, in this case, of people with disabilities. As such, providing services, promoting citizen participation, among many other initiatives. Meanwhile, the private sector has the prestige of a brand or brand name and the power to reach people more efficiently, perhaps through advertising. The possibility of mobilizing information through media should be used to work on cross-cutting issues such as education, rights, inequality, support for vulnerable groups as well. Since this could be the platform to propose a link between both sectors. Although by participating in these sectors, the common good that is sought, the benefit for both sectors, is not completely ruled out. That's to say the private sector is being given the opportunity to enter the world of corporate social responsibility. This can position them in face of the public as companies that are not only concerned about generating economic profits, but also while contributing to the improvement of the quality of life of the population, especially populations that, due to their living conditions, face inequality or discriminations, as could be the case of people with disabilities. I can continue. Yes. Uh, por lo pronto, la innovación social tecnológica es una gran herramienta para compartir información a pesar de los retos que enfrentan los sectores frente a la brecha digital, por ejemplo, la falta de accesibilidad a las nuevas tecnologías por la situación económica, cultural o generacional, por el crecimiento 
sabemos que el crecimiento ha ido acelerando el paso en escuelas, en centros de trabajo, en universidades y un sinnúmero de instancias en todo el mundo han mudado su sistema presencial a las redes, lo cual ha permitido llegar a diferentes partes del mundo, generando nuevas experiencias que podrían inspirar a realizar investigaciones a través de acervos digitales, paneles, webinarios, grupos focales, fomentando la información documentada y científica y además dar paso a bolsas de trabajo digitales para personas con discapacidad y empresas que estén comprometidas con la inclusión, programas y proyectos de capacitación para personas con discapacidad en línea, entre otras acciones mediante las TICs. Entonces, un reto importante será combatir aquella información falsa que puede provocar sesgos y estigmas en las personas y se debe preparar también un plan muy estructurado para utilizar herramientas digitales, no solo para la divulgación de información científica, sino también para hacer posible la, que sea accesible la información a todo el mundo. Okay. Furthermore, uh, for the time being, social technological innovation is a great tool for sharing information, despite the challenges faced by both sectors in uh, the digital divide. That's to say the lack of accessibility to new technologies due to economic, cultural, or generational situations. Its growth has been accelerated through the areas of schools, workplaces, universities, and a number of instances around the world that have moved towards the face-to-face -to -face system towards networks. This has allowed reaching different parts of the world and generating new experiences that could inspire research through digital panels, webinars, focus groups, and the promotion of documented and scientific work. Additionally, as well to giving way to digital job networks for people with disabilities and companies that are thus committed to inclusion. This means training programs and projects for people with disabilities online, among other actions and initiatives through ICTs. An important challenge will be to combat false information that can cause bias and stigma in people. A very structured plan is necessary and it must be prepared in order to have the use of digital tools be enabled not only to disseminate scientific information, but also to make it accessible to the entire population. Por último, eh, la relevancia del sector público, como ya se ha mencionado, está en su capacidad para brindar el apoyo económico mediante el financiamiento público para aplicar y generar leyes, reformas, iniciativas en favor de una causa usando los recursos del Estado para impulsar y hacer obligatorias acciones. Al ser leyes que se, donde los ciudadanos pueden eh, de cualquier país involucrarse y contribuir a las necesidades sociales, no solo eh, como filantropía, sino como un compromiso de todos los países. Actualmente en América Latina hay países que se están dedicando a fomentar la inclusión laboral para personas con discapacidad, declarando en su plantilla personal entre el 4 y 5% que debe ser para personas con discapacidad, como podría ser el caso de Brasil, Chile, Costa Rica, Argentina, entre otros que si bien aún no han logrado por completo reformar sus leyes, están en camino de hacerlo o han dado iniciativas para esto. Sin embargo, está, está muy lejos de cumplir con objetivos que uh, aún no han establecido sanciones claras al no cumplir con disposiciones. La capacitación regularmente llega a ser deficiente o nula para las personas con discapacidad o la infraestructura de las empresas no es necesariamente la más adecuada para la inclusión. Por eso la importancia del sector privado radica en la posibilidad de llegar a más personas con su posicionamiento y el reconocimiento a la sociedad, además de contar con las posibilidades de materiales de excelente calidad para reforzar los objetivos establecidos. Es decir, así brindar oportunidades para el desarrollo personal y profesional de las personas con discapacidad mediante programas de inclusión. Es decir, articular los dos sectores, observar el compromiso de ambas partes y abrir espacios para eventos y proyectos permitiendo la participación del capital humano, es decir, generar iniciativas internacionales para favorecer el cooperativismo por parte de los gobiernos y empresas privadas de todo el mundo. 
therefore, and finally, the relevance of the public sector, as we mentioned before, lies in its capacity to provide economic support through public financing in order to apply and generate laws, reforms, initiatives in favor of a cause, using state resources to promote and make these actions mandatory by being a law it indicates to the citizens of any given country that getting involved and contributing to social needs is not only philanthropy, but a commitment, a commitment for everyone. Currently, in Latin America, there are countries that are dedicated in promoting labor inclusion for people with disabilities. And it's stated that between four to 5% of staff in certain companies must be people with disabilities, such as the case of Brazil, Chile, Costa Rica, Ecuador, Bolivia, and Argentina, among others. Although they have yet to achieve a complete reform in their laws, they are on their way to do so, or have taken upon themselves the initiatives to complete this. Nevertheless, they are still far from meeting the objectives, since there are still no clear sanctions or fines for not complying with these provisions. Provisions. The corresponding training is sometimes deficient or non-existent, and the infrastructure of many companies is not completely adequate for inclusion. The importance of the private sector lies in the possibility of reaching more people due to its position and recognition in society. Additionally, to having the possibility of excellent quality materials in order to reinforce and complete the objectives, as well as the opportunity to provide new opportunities for people in having them as personnel and professional development for people with disabilities. This can be done through inclusion programs in these companies. The articulation of both sectors, the commitment of both parts should be observed. For example, from the public sector to the private sector, there could exist the offer of support available in terms of permits, easement in procedures, financing, training, etc. While from the private sector to the public sector, it can give support by opening spaces for events, projects, allowing the participation of its human capital and generating educational and labor offers. This generates an international initiative that should favor cooperativism. Thank you so much. As I mentioned before, now we will show you the three in, in initiatives that replicate the technology, technological solutions in Chilean companies. We would like to present you with the three, these three cutting edge technologies that are changing um, the employment scenario for people, in, in, for people with disabilities in their countries. First, let me introduce you to Mo, Moses Chaudhary, Program Manager at Enable India, one of our of the biggest organizations working for disability inclusion in India and Asia. Moses will present us iTool, a surf learning tool that enables persons with visual impairments to create a digital pathway for the 21st, for the 21st century computer-based jobs.
namaste in our 20 years of work at enable india we have accelerated opportunities for persons with vision impairment today the highest fresher salary of a visually impaired is 43 times higher than the median per capita income in india did you know that persons with vision impairment work across 27 sectors in 21st centuries cutting edge jobs like network engineer mis executive firefighter doctor which conventionally require sight when i say this to people i generally get the raised eyebrows and with disbelief and curiosity our solution i tool uh, has played a significant role in creating that level playing field for persons with vision impairment in the open labor market as we all know the light travels faster than sound and persons with vision impairment work on computer using screen reader that reads things on the screen sequentially but a sighted can see things on the screen parallelly and hence has advantage so how do we make visually impaired truly competitive and productive at work the secret really lies in the world-class methodology that is evolved at enable india with the human-centric insights so how do we scale these insights and reach it to 2.2 billion persons with vision impairment out there in the world we need a solution that is easy to use accessible and reduces dependency on expert trainers and that unique exact solution is our i tool the true value of our self-learning solution i tool can be seen with an example of cornelius cornelius is a visually impaired and comes from small village in meghalaya one of the northeastern states in india when he came to enable india had very little exposure so how do we make people like cornelius job ready with speed efficiency and confident like anybody else since cornelius had very little experience of using technology he needed lots of practice on working on computers the i tool provided him with the choice of over 400 plus exercises concepts ranging from computer basics microsoft tools and internet to practice over and over again i tool saw every action of cornelius on the computer and gave him instant feedback Cornelius, since he's visually impaired by birth, also struggled to understand what was happening on the screen. For example, I remember he struggled to understand what is a cursor and how does it function. So I tool taught him how to visualize and made him efficient on the computer. Now, with this accuracy and speed that he had gained, today Cornelius works as a spam management executive in one of the e reputed email companies. Today he works with the lightning speed on the computer. Uh, he processes over 100 emails in a day with just 5 to 10 second turnaround time on each email. Like Cornelius, 10,000 users across 20 states in India and 14 countries have benefited from using iTool. Now we want to scale this and our big, hairy, audacious goal is to reach out to 1 million visually impaired users in next 5 years. And our key strategic priority is to make this tool available in the countries where there is large population of visually impaired or in the countries where uh, inclusion and uh, digital empowerment is on their development agenda or in the, uh, you know, in the countries where already there are organizations working in this space. The replication of iTool in Chile is particularly important to us as we have an opportunity to replicate the tool in the business environment and help the inclusion of persons with vision impairment in the open labor market. Enable India will be the knowledge partner and we will provide access to software, training content. We would like to partner with disability people organizations, uh, skilling and training institutes, academic institutes, uh, local governments, employers, business associations, and donors. Business model to achieve this replication. Like in India, we hope to make this tool available for free of cost for the end users. We want to ensure that persons with vision impairment have zero barriers in accessing this tool. In India, we have a funder who is committed for three years. We need uh, access to financial resources when it comes to Chile for the following. Uh, to localize the software and the training content uh, to the Chilean context, build the capacities and the, train the trainers of uh, you know Chilean organizations, 
to do the project management my monitoring and evaluation of the project in conclusion let me illustrate the impact that we will make when we replicate the tool through my own personal journey 25 years ago i used to depend on my mother for the simplest thing like reading newspaper for getting cricket updates today because i am digitally empowered with right techniques and inputs i have transformed myself from being a dependent to a leader who is spearheading digital empowerment mission for persons with vision impairment today i take pride in reading out news to my wife and i am a primary breadwinner of my family and a proud taxpayer i invite all of you to join me in making more visually impaired as active citizens and nation builders you can reach me on my email id moses at enableindia.org for taking the conversations forward thank you very much Thank you, Moses. Let me introduce you now to pa Paloma Cid, Program Manager of Fundación Once. Paloma will present the, us the 3D as assistive products for job adaptation project. Hello, my name is Paloma Cid. I am an occupational therapist at the Universal Accessibility Innovation Department at Fundación 11. Fundación 11 is a leading foundation in Spain. Our goal is to achieve the full inclusion of people with disabilities by developing job training and employment opportunities and promoting universal accessibility, as well as the development of accessible environment products and services. We want to thank the Zero Project Organization, ICT, and Pacto de Productividad de Chile for giving us this opportunity to present our project of design and printing of assistive products in 3D. This project is a result from the collaboration between Fundación Once and the Royal Board on Disability, an independent organization attached to the Ministry of Social Rights and Agenda 2030 to promote universal accessibility. This project is inspired by the works being carried out to ensure accessibility in job places. It specifically arose from our efforts in assessing and adapting job environments for workers with disabilities. We realized that some workers needed custom-made assistive product, which was not always cost-effective. In 2018, we decided to research the possibility of using 3D technology to design and create assistive devices and training a team of people in creating parametrizable 3D designs. Two years later, through www.accessibilitas.com and other specific websites such Thinkiverse or Prusa Printers, Fundación 11 made 18 designs available to everyone most of which were created to make your performance easier. I would like to comment on some of the situation from which each of these designs originate. The first piece was designed, uh, we designed it was a four armrest to allow people with difficulties approaching a table to have an extra surface to support the forearms. This helps them improve their posture and control their movements. The idea came from job place assessment performed to a worker in 2017. We prescribed a commercial solution, which did not work because it collided with the worker's wheelchair. This situation prompted the idea of creating a custom made for arms rest using 3D printing. While we were able to successfully print it, we didn't know how to make it available to tables with different thicknesses and lengths. In 2019, the team was trained in parametrized design, designs, which allow us to create eight different designs, some of them printable with different parameters to meet a person's needs. Each of our designs has a personal experience and a new, unique team of professionals behind. 
our team works hard to learn about a, a person's need and provide a valid solution. I invite you to see all of our designs at www.accessibilitas.com. This is a portal where you can find information related to accessibility in all its aspects, regulations, news, trainings, and one of its areas is dedicated to super products. Here you can find information about designs, but also about other complementary resources, such as the Bank of Super Products for companies and universities. In the past year, Alone, a total of 933 3D product files have been downloaded from this portal, a third of the total number of downloads of projects internationally. Each year, around 30 job assessments are carried out, from which new ideas for super products are developed, and 5 to 20 new products are designed. In November 2020, the possibility for disability organizations to request printed pieces from the ONCE Foundation was launched. And in the last two months of the year, we printed more than 250 pieces using this procedure. All this would not be possible without the teamwork of government, entities, private companies, and the disability associative movement in Spain. This collaboration is articulated through agreements and projects in which its entity contributes with knowledge, experience and funding, each according to their role it plays in society. We strongly believe this project has a future and can be very helpful for people with disabilities all over the world, allowing them to have equal job opportunities and suitable working environment, just as those of people without disability usually have. This project can easily be replicated and provides the opportunity to develop cost-effective access solutions. One of the biggest challenges we face today is the pandemic, which prevents face-to-face -face knowledge sharing. However, we believe that with training and networking, we are able to establish a network of international stakeholders in order to enrich the project with new contributions and to make our knowledge and expertise available to other entities. We are therefore very happy to have submitted the project to ICT Innovation for Inclusion and to have been one of those selected. The purpose objective is to provide a group of professionals from one or more entities in Chile with the necessary knowledge and material to carry out assessment and adaptation of workstation, including 3D printing support products. The final beneficiaries will be people with disability, who thanks to this adaptation will be car will be able to carry out their work activities under the same condition as workers without disabilities. In addition, the, collaborated in the collaborating entities will benefit from the exchange of knowledge and will be able to make use of it to solve other situations related to disability and super products. The collaboration with Pacto de Productividad de Chile is going very smoothly, and we are very happy. Oh, we are really sorry that we have uh, to um, bring the session uh, to an end uh, so that we have enough time uh, between the next uh, session so we can do the background uh, setup for the next session. So everyone that is interested can still remain in the Microsoft team calls, but we will start the next session on a point in the next minute. So we'll be back uh, soon. See you then.